We're back here in Studio B, and I've got the pleasure of sitting next to Cameron Crandall from Kingston, who is going to answer a very important question, one that I think a lot of the members of our audience have been asking, and that is, when is it time to replace your SSD? Now, Cameron, there are a lot of people who have a lot of different theories on, well, an SSD is different from a hard drive, and therefore this, or this is how I know when it's starting to die, and this is how I know when I should get my data off. One of the ones I hear most often is, well, when it starts to slow down, that's when I know. And I, I've actually seen that with some of the other SSDs that I've used uh, from, say, Samsung or some other manufacturers, mm -hmm. where if it starts to thrash and I start to see my throughput really fall, I think, okay, well, it's about to die. It's time for me to get a new SSD. Is, is that really the best way to judge? Well, first off, I think that um, uh, universally, most uh, users of SSD are concerned about an SSD wearing out because they know that uh, uh, flash has a finite number of, of, of write cycles to it. They know that the drives are going to wear out over time. And a lot of them, uh, a lot of users want to see some sort of a, a fuel gauge, if you will, um, of the life left on the SSD. I would say in the past, um, as SSDs began to wear out, they would slow down. But I think with the current crop of SSDs that are in the marketplace from reputable companies, um, that's pretty much gone away. You should expect mm. uh, pretty much steady state performance over the life of the drive. Uh, the, I think the best thing to look at, which almost every uh, SSD manufacturer has, is a, uh, is a little software tool that they provide to look at the life that's left on the SSD. And um, I think you know, we've, we've studied the, the typical, what we call the typical client workload, probably what you and I do on our computers every day. We understand it very well. And what we, what we understand today with the controller technology and the flash technology that's available today, we really don't have a concern around SSDs wearing out prematurely. Hmm. The useful life of the system is going to expire long before the SSD wears out. So I would say on the client side, we really don't have that concern anymore. For servers, the workloads are very different. We need to be more aware of what they're using the drive for. But the typical client workload, even if you're a gamer, even a heavy user, you know, we've classified a heavy user as writing around 10 gigabytes per day mm. to the drive. So if you look at that against the uh, endurance specs of an SSD today, you're, you're just scratching the surface. Well, let, let's back up and let's actually talk a little bit about why SSDs wear down. Now, uh, most of our audience, because they're savvy, they understand that writes do nothing. I mean, reads do nothing. You right. can read off an SSD all day long and it's not going to eat into its lifespan. In fact, we had a member of the audience who built an SSD media server exactly because of that. Because it's low heat, he could put all his movies on it, and because he writes it once, he goes, this thing's going to last forever. The yeah. power supply is going to die before the drives. But what's the actual process of wearing down? I, I know when you've got a cell, you're actually pushing a charge into that cell, yep. which kind of wears down the insulation, and, and that, that's how I understand the wear. But what's the actual mechanics of why an SSD cell will start to die? So uh, what you said is exactly true. So when, um, when you push an electrical charge into a cell, you're, you're going to weaken that cell over time. So when we uh, uh, buy flash from our suppliers, they guarantee us a minimum number of what we call program erase cycles. The, mi the, the minimum number of times we can push an electrical charge into that cell, and that cell is going to trap that charge and hold a positive, a positive charge. So, and that's really where we get the one and the zero, mm. right? A positive charge right, is a one, right. a negative charge is a, is a zero. So we're trapping that, we're trapping uh, those electrons, right? And if, if we have a leak, that's basically data loss. Okay, so, um, so that's, that's really what's wearing out. That, think of that cell, an electrical charge being pushed into that cell thousands of times, and eventually that cell can't hold that charge anymore, and that's when we have data loss. Uh, what, what is the typical cycle for a cell? How many times can I do that, a charge it, discharge, charge it, discharge, before it can't hold the charge anymore? So that's a great question. So there are different grades of, of flash. So there is flash that will do several hundred program array cycles, um, all the way up to NAND that will do several thousand program array cycles. For what we consider a the typical client workload, that term I keep using, um, you know, a 3,000 PE cycle flash is, is, is more than suitable for the typical client workload. So 
most of Kingston's SSDs are, are built using uh, 3,000 PE cycle, what we call MLC flash. Which doesn't sound like a lot. 3,000 doesn't sound like a big number, but then how many cells are in a typical flash drive? And we're doing wear leveling. And you're doing wear leveling, Yeah, right. so we distribute the writes out across the drive. We're not writing to one area of the drive and wearing that one area out. A, a lot of the failures that we got in the early drives, because I, I had a lot of them, was because wear leveling wasn't really perfected. I mean, they may say they had trim, but it probably wasn't completely effective. Right. It wasn't spreading out the writes over all the drives. So you would get sectors that were really, really weak, and that could cause the entire drive to fail. Is, is that the cause of most of these failures that we've heard about? Uh, it, it can be. Um, what, what's, what's happened with controllers over the last several years is they've, they've gotten really good at what we call garbage collection um, and clearing out that invalid data. One of the things that really slowed down SSDs in the past was when you wrote to the drive for a long period of time, you had a lot of invalid data, basically data that had been deleted but still resided on the drives. Garbage collection. Garbage collection and trim, right? They effectively, try, they're trying to accomplish the same thing, and that is keeping the NAND clean so that when a new write comes into the drive, it can write directly to flash without introducing some latencies mm. to manage some, some of that invalid data. So trim and garbage collection are really key to steady state performance over the life of an SSD. Um, almost everybody supports trim today. Uh, garbage collection is done very, very well. And on the early generation SSDs, we didn't have trim, and we didn't have very good garbage collection routines, and we saw drive performance fall way off from yeah. what it was right out of the box. Well, I, I remember having drives that were rated for like 400 and 200, and suddenly they were at 150. Yep. Yeah. And I'm thinking, whoa. And someone, later on I found out, because of uh, the fact that we've got Steve Gibson on our network, and he told me to run a diagnostic with his tool, and essentially all they did was garbage collection. He, and he explained, if, if you've got all this garbage in your flash, every time you want to do a write, it's got to look at that section and say, well, this is not ready, and let's exactly. prepare the, the flash cells for you, and then write it. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that's going. Now, bottom line it for the folks at home, if they're worried about their SSD wearing out, is that a valid concern? I would say with the, with the current crop of SSDs from reputable SSD companies, um, it's not a concern anymore. So the only real reason to replace it is because you want one that's faster. You want one that's faster or bigger. Yeah. Or larger capacity. More flashier. More maybe. flashier, yeah. Redder. <laughs> kind of more alumini. -y. All right. All right. Well, I've been speaking with Cameron Crandall from Kingston. He's been telling us that if you've got an SSD, it's just fine. But still, go ahead and say it's wearing out if you need a reason to buy another. 